Fehmandal, good afternoon. I'd like to begin this afternoon just by giving a quick background um, to Llanid Lois High School. We are a very rural high school, not far from here in Powys. We have approximately 650 learners and we conducted this project between the languages and the English curriculum areas. The subject areas included there were um, English, Welsh first language, Welsh second language and French and our target audience were Year 8 at the time, they are now Year 9, and the lower ability groups in Year 8. So therefore, in English, we were looking at the support and skills focus groups. In Welsh Second Language, we were looking at Set 3 and 4. In French, we were looking at Set 4 and 5. And then Welsh Museum, or Welsh First Language, they're a mixed ability group. The project focus then was on spelling, punctuation, broadening vocabulary and then using oracy to discuss the above and also develop the above. This is a more detailed outline um, of what we wanted to achieve and improve as a SILT PLC. Um, we started off by creating a learning style questionnaire or a pupil voice questionnaire and from that uh, we decided to concentrate on spelling and games, and punctuation and broadening vocabulary. Um, this is an example of our pupil voice questionnaire. Um, just to, I don't know if you can see um, the questionnaire, um, but some of the questions included I learn best by and we gave them a list of options um, to, to tick. Next question was I learn new words by and again a list of options. I improve my spelling by and I know when to use and that was the focus on punctuation. Okay, data analysis of the questionnaire. We had some very, very interesting results. And first of all, I'd like to look at question five, which is, I learn best by. Um, we found that the majority of learners in year eight at the time enjoyed working with a partner, and particularly lower ability um, children, probably because they liked having someone else beside them to give them a, a boost of confidence. Playing games was very, very popular. Indeed, it was so popular in one class that we did have 100%. Um, everybody in the class said that they learnt best by playing games. That was a Welsh first language group. And interestingly, most learners thought that they didn't learn as well by reading and writing. So we took that into account when we were planning our project. Question six then, uh, data analysis. I learn new words by, now then, this is where our results contradicted themselves a bit. Because in question five, the learners said that they didn't learn as well by reading and writing. However, when they turned to learning new words, a great deal of them said that they learned new words by reading them. So we did have to take that into account. Very interestingly as well, a lot of the learners, or a great deal of the learners, said that they learnt new words by hearing them. So we took those into account and definitely um, considered that when we were looking at oracy to develop spelling and punctuation, that that was very important, that they talk, but also that they listen to others. And then question seven then, I improved my spelling by... Quite a few of them said that they looked at strategies such as LCWC, look, cover, uh, write and check, and also just by copying out. So we didn't want to um, displace those strategies, we just wanted to put others in place. And finally, for the data analysis, question eight. This, question eight, I know when to use A, and then capital letter, comma, full stop, speech marks, apostrophe, question mark, etc. Very interesting results. Um, for example, if you look at the capital letter there, 94% of all boys and girls across the four subject areas said that they knew when to use a capital letter. However, in my experience, when you actually mark their work, that doesn't always translate into their work. So they may well know how to use one, but actually using it is a very, very different matter. So we wanted to put in place strategies where we could ensure that they use these in their work. Um, following on from our research, um, our next steps, therefore, um, and as Gwenon mentioned, um, we decided to concentrate on um, looking at games um, and then to continue to develop games in order to improve their spelling. 
Um, research carried out um, showed that these were the games that staff tended to use um, across the school, not just in language areas, but across the school. And then we decided as a SILT PLC um, to create a list of words that we would concentrate on. Um, so for example, the English and Welsh first language, we concentrated on 30 commonly misspelt words um, that our groups tended to misspell, and then 20 for Welsh second language, 10 for French. And the games we decided to concentrate on in order to um, develop their spelling was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Blockbusters, and Countdown. These games would then be used alongside the other strategies that Gwen had mentioned, LCWC, um, copying out, and so on. And we've got an example here. This is an example of the English Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that was, that was created. Um, you can see A is obviously the, the correct answer, um, but the other answers that were provided were misspellings that pupils had made in their first test. Um, we did this as a class, um, and then they were provided with the answer. There we go. As you can see here, this is a Welsh first language version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Slightly different, as in we gave them the English word and then they had to choose the correct spelling from the different options there. We also did something similar for Welsh second language and for French, giving them the English word and then giving them four different options. Also, as Sue said, those, some of them, not all of them, but some of those were actually misspellings coming from the class anyway. There's the answer. There we go. I'll go through there. Blockbusters was another new thing that we tried. Um, especially in Marsh First Language, what I did was I created this grid, and as you see on the left there, um, the learner was, would start in the left column and they would choose a letter, for example, B. Um, and then I would say, right, okay, this team you have to spell brazoid. So they had to spell it out to me phonetically. And if they got it right, they were able then to continue across the board. Whoever got to the other side first were the winners. Okay, so it was targeting skills of spelling, but different spelling now, so different skill saying the, the spelling out loud. And the countdown game is very easy. Um, it is available, I believe, on the internet. However, um, it's very easy to create um, a manual and you just use the, the cards and perhaps use, use blue tack um, should the internet not work. Um, so to evaluate the, the games um, that we carried out, um, we found that the pupils tended to enjoy the games. Um, we found that they, they worked alongside other strategies and they can be used individually with individual pupils or as a class. And we found as a result of um, playing these games, pupil spelling did, um, did improve when we retested. Okay, oracy. Um, one of the things that we tried to do was encourage um, the lower ability learners um, to write. Um, extended pieces of writing in all four subject areas and we wanted them to be able to discuss and peer assess after they'd finished um, and look at the contents but also look at the structure of what they've done. So for example um, we gave them speaking frames, I know these are a bit small but these speaking frames, two here, um, would be able to be used by one learner asking another one, have you done these things? So for example, we'd give this to one learner and they would ask, have you presented the work in the appropriate format? Have you used um, clearly constructed paragraphs or have you used paragraphs at all? And then the other one would target the vocabulary. Um, for example, could you include another adjective? Could you include a different adjective? So very similar to what we've had already, looking at um, things like for a Welsh divlas, but trying to um, place other words or other adjectives instead of divlas 
in there. So we found these were very beneficial because lots of our learners, especially lower ability learners, wouldn't know what to ask another person, um, how to um, improve their work or have you done this. So we found that this actually, as I'll say in the next slide, um, it gave a structure to the conversations but also gave them the confidence to know what to ask others. And the hope is that in time they will learn what the kind of things to ask the other person about their work. Um, also, from the side of development, we'd also like to develop these and use them as a success criteria for the learners. So the learners put something like this together before writing a piece of extended writing or descriptive writing, and then that they return to them and be able to ask each other at the end, have you done this? Have you included in such and such? If not, why, could, why haven't you? And could you do it next time, etc. Another strategy um, we've implemented and developed this year is Word of the Month. Um, it did begin as Word of the Fortnight, um, just in English, but over the course of this year we've developed it now into English and First Language, so we've got the consistency between the two First Languages, and then you can also see we've developed it now to include French and, in and Welsh Second Language words. Um, this is just um, a few examples of some of the words that the pupils are introduced to. Um, and I've just outlined here some of the tasks that a, uh, an individual teacher can, can do with Word of the Month at some point in their lesson. Um, this isn't just for the Year 8 group that we were targeting, this is for across the, the whole school. And to evaluate Word of the Month, we found, as I mentioned earlier, it does create consistency across the curricul curriculum areas. Um, it, of course, highlights bilingualism. Um, and of course, the, the, the original focus was to broaden their vocabulary, and um, I've got pieces of work um, to show that it has improved um, their extended pieces of writing. Whole school literacy, literacy tip. This was something that was in Llanid Lowes High School already, and the way it works is on a Monday morning during the PSRE session, each form tutor is given a slip of A4 paper with the literacy tip for the week on it. It was up and running, but what we'd, what we'd hope and what we have done is we've updated it and hopefully clarified it for the learners. Um, as you can see there, we give one wrong example and one correct example, but no explanation why. So the hope is that this generation, uh, generation, generates talk throughout the school in the form groups why one is correct why the other one isn't correct and what's the difference and hopefully that will um, in time feed into their English and their Welsh and their French hopefully at the moment we've just got it in English we did have it in Welsh but that needs to be developed and hopefully in time this will be developed into French to some extent as well so evaluation, updated and clarified. Um, development as well, we'd like to also have a specific focus per half term. So for example, after Christmas, between January and February, we may look at punctuation. The following half term, we'll look at a different aspect of grammar so that there will be specific um, targets during the whole school year. And hopefully this will feed into our school improvement plan and also the literacy agenda for the whole school. We'd also, as Sue mentioned, we do have a uh, word of the month for English and Welsh first language and then French and Welsh second language. In time, we'd like to incorporate the word of the month into the weekly literacy tip as well. So uh, um, our evaluation of the project as a whole, um, we, it means that we've now worked closer as an English and language curriculum area, um, but more importantly, um, it's created consistency between the two um, areas, um, and it is our intention to continue to work um, closely together. We have found that learners have enjoyed the project so far and just a range of activities. It was very interesting from our point of view and also the learners enjoyed taking part in a questionnaire because they felt that they had an effect on what we were teaching them and how we were teaching them. <laughs> They've also really enjoyed things like the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and the Blockbusters and also the Oracy Workshops uh, worksheets. It does bring a bit of variety maybe <coughs> to an extended writing task the oracy does bring a bit of variety there as well. Uh, we do feel that we have so far had an impact on whole school literacy. 
Um, we will be using and adapting some of these resources and we have already, for example, um, I do use these Oracy cards with other groups now and we will be developing more of them um, and also the literacy tip has obviously had an effect on year 7 to 11 in the whole school. And future developments. Um, we still need to complete our pupil voice questionnaires. We carried one out back in about January, February time, um, but we do need to complete our pupil questionnaire with the, our focus group, um, last year's year eight, current year nine. Um, but it's also our intention to do a similar task with other academic years as well. We will be presenting our ideas and resources to the Literacy PLC, which is in school. The Literacy PLC has formed um, one member of every curriculum area comes to the meeting, so we'll be disseminating our resources there, and hopefully we'll be able to give them to the curriculum area leaders for them to then develop in their own curriculum areas. And as the games prove popular with the pupils and obviously has worked as well, um, we intend to continue to develop games, activities and strategies. We hope to continue developing the speaking frames, as I said earlier, to improve content and also just to um, improve um, writing across the board in other subjects. For example, I teach music in Year 7. I'm hopefully going to use some of these speaking frames um, to discuss the extended writing after they've done a performance to evaluate the performance. Word of the month um, can be revised and updated as and when necessary to ensure um, further consistency between all the languages. And finally, we hopefully are considering um, doing a lot more with the pupil voice because we found it so beneficial and so interesting. We'd like to do it again with other target groups and maybe have different aspects of liter literacy. There we go. Diolch yn fawr, diolch yn